Hello everyone and welcome to something rather unusual. Today, and over the coming episodes, I am learning to speedrun. I've never done a speedrun before under time conditions, let alone in this game. But this is a very accessible one to get into. Um, I've got a lot of notes uh, with me. I'd like to say thanks in advance to Edgy's notes and, and the various tutorials he's done. And that's broadly what I'm going to be following. This is a rather unusual speedrun uh, because it's very variable and as such it's easy to pick up and very difficult to master. So I'm just going to have a crack at it and see how we do. Um, this will be a cut down condensed version but the full version will be online somewhere at some points. Um, so with that I'm going to get set up to start. And when I press begin game here we start. I might need to restart a couple of times depending on what nature the EV begins as but let's at least go from here. Three, two, one, and start. Why am I bothering to enter my fucking username when I'm running out, out of time? Uh, it's, it's not something I naturally do, speedrunning, so it will take me a little bit to get used to it. Ugh. Oh, am I going to name the rival as well? Yes, I probably should. I kind of forgot how the... I ha so I have played through this game before, I should say, but I kind of forgotten about all of the cutscene-y kind of stuff in the opening, because I've only played it through the once and it was a while ago, kind of just about pre-pandemic. So, I need to get some stuff set up first. Um, we need to set some of these, so tech speed on to fast, battle effects to off, battle style to set, and movie skipping to on. Brilliant. Right, with that, let's go and grab ourselves an Eevee and see if it passes the test. Oh, here's our rival who I named Jeb. I don't know why, it just came to my head. There we go. Now, unfortunately, the one thing my notes do not have is what to actually do with the game. It only has speedrun tips. So the first thing is like what to do with the Eevee, but just gonna have to remember how to actually trigger the Eevee happening, I believe. Do we just go straight up and uh, interact with Oak? I can't remember. Let's find out. No, no, we go straight into the Eevee. I have to fight it? I really have no memory of this at all. Oh, he's teaching me how to catch. There we go. Yes, I know how to do this. We just have to go. Hup. Nope. And hup. I know how to do this, he says. No, he doesn't. I hit my microphone with my bloody Joy-Con as well. Great start. Right, what we got here? Let's find out. So the nature of the Eevee is what's important. Uh, anything that's lower attack means we're going to struggle and will probably be restarted upon. So let's have a look. Got four minute reset, that's annoying, isn't it? Right, let's have a look at your stats. Come on. Oh, we're free! God, I was just standing like an idiot. Right, uh, okay, we want to go into party. And let's look at this EV. Check summary. Nature, lax. What do we do with lax? That's defense up, special defense down. That is a go! We are a go! Right, let's roll. So, as I leave, your man will try to fight me, I assume, and at this point... Oh no, you're just giving us a Pokedex? Takes moves very fast in this game, which is quite handy from a speedrunning perspective. I assumed we were going to fight him there, but there we go. Um, right, let's go up to the Pokemon. So, the first... Right. So, one of the things to explain with this speedrun, which means it's a little bit unusual. Some gyms have a requirement that you need in order to enter that gym and to fight the gym leader. Three of those matter to us. Um, the requirement of Brock's gym is that you show him either a grass or a water type Pokemon. This is kind of, I assume, so that you can not get stuck. So basically you have to show him something that's super effective against him. Um, so Mi Misty's gym in Cerulean requires you to have a Pokemon that's at least level 15. Again, presumably just a bit of handholding to stop you getting stuck. And the one that really matters for us is Koga's gym. You cannot uh, go into Koga's gym. Oh, bloody hell. Try it again. Um, you do not want to, you cannot enter Koga's gym until you have 50 species of Pokemon in your Pokedex registered. That is super important and is what we'll be doing for the majority of the game. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing on the way out there is capturing enough Pokemon and keeping track of the ones I've captured to make sure that we can get 50 by the time we need to take on Koga. Yes, I want to head straight back to the lab. That's very handy that they've added that in. Um, so, the other thing is because we are going to be, by and large, avoiding trainers, catching a Pokemon is going to be our primary source of experience. Uh, so for that reason, it actually does really matter what, how we catch Pokemon as well. If you get better captures, so like, you know, using two players at once, I'll like show what that is, and kind of getting an excellent capture, you get more experience for the rest of your Pokemon. That helps level up stuff uh, faster in order to, um, in order to evolve 
because uh, other Pokemon in our party, because everyone in your party gets some experience, so we can do that. And also means that the Pokemon we actually need to use in battle, which is going to be about three, maybe four Pokemon throughout the entire run, will get as much experience as possible. So the catching is really the kind of key to it, but the catching is also super fucking variable, uh, in that sometimes you will get different Pokemon appearing at different times, and you know it's not always sufficient to sit around waiting for an exact Pokemon, it's about rooting on the fly. And that's kind of why this is a complex Let's Play. So I've got guides and notes for that, and I'll be trying to figure it out as I go along, but it could be a little bit variable. He's got a Pikachu here, so I'm just going to kill it by using Tackle. Um, I think you can't actually lose this, so I'm just going to Tackle repeatedly, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, two to four Tackles should do it. I'm going to head up to Viridian Forest yet. We want to start our captures in Viridian Forest. There are things on Route 1, but they aren't really worth it. Everything you can get there, you can get in the forest anyway while you're looking for other stuff. So I will see you at the entrance to Viridian Forest. I forget the coffee bloke isn't here on this version as well. As I say, I've only played this once, but obviously I've played red and blue. An absolute shit ton. Uh, there is a Weedle there, and we do want to catch a Weedle, but the ones in Viridian Forest are better. So, let's head in. I've got a list of all the Pokemon that are available in each area, and they are color-coded. Green for always catch this if it turns up, possibly even wait around for it to turn up. Uh, like a Bulbasaur! Oh. Let's go to get caught in a fight with this guy and the Bulbasaur's gonna be gone when I'm back. Because Bulbasaur is rare, but it's absolutely worth it if it does crop up. If it doesn't, we get rid of it though. Uh, we don't certainly wait around for a Bulbasaur. So green is always capture this if you see it. Orange is if you see it. It can be situational, depending on your circumstances. You may want to go for it, you may not. Red is literally never bother with it there. Uh, a lot of the times with the red ones, it's because like, you get them, like takes. Spiro, for example, it's not worth catching a Spiro because later on, if you need that many Pokemon, you catch a higher level Spiro, you level it once and becomes a Fero. Whereas if you catch a Spiro here, if you want a Fero later, you've got to catch one and it's a much harder capture. It's that kind of thing. Uh, I have no idea. It's been a while. I can't actually remember if. Ooh, quick attack, that's handy. Um, I can't remember if that Bulbasaur is still going to be on the field when we are done here. It is! Right, let's catch this Bulbasaur. So, to make this a bit easier, I'm actually going to summon my second player. Nope, can't do that yet because I don't have two Pokemon. Right, so ignore me entirely there. Let's get this, and then once he's finished attacking... Hup! There we go, that's excellent, So, which means it should have a better chance of capturing, and also get me more experience if we do capture it successfully. And we did! That's brilliant. Crucially now, um, we actually want to deposit this. We don't want to keep it with us. Watching something level up, as you can see here, is time-consuming. Um, and we are not going to level up this Bulbasaur into an either I Ivysaur or a Venusaur. It's just not a practical way. They're a much faster Pokémon that we can get. So I'm going to deposit it here. Uh, da -da -da. Move Pokémon. No. Menuing is a skill in this, and I have not got it, certainly. Um, remove Pokémon from party. There we go. That seems like a very clunky way of doing that, but there we go. Um, oh, there's a Kakuna, but Kakuna is orange on my list. Not worth catching uh, unless you absolutely need to. This last here is unavoidable, so we're going to fight her. This is not the last I was thinking of. I may have fucked up here. Because uh, the last I was looking at is supposed to have a Pidgey. Please don't Poison Point me, otherwise I'm going to have a bad time. Thank you. Oh yeah, no one has abilities in this anyway, so Poison Point isn't even a risk. Okay, well, that's Brittany, not the last Jocelyn. I clearly should have hooked around the back of you or something. Oh, yeah, I should have actually hooked around the front and come up there through those uh, grasses. There are Pokemon here, but other than Bulbasaur, I'm actually going to avoid them all. Um, because there's something useful that we want. Uh, and that makes capturing a lot easier. So I'm going to continue heading through here, keeping my eyes on for things. Well, that's a large Bulbasaur. Larger than the one I got. That would even yield me more experience, but... We didn't know that, and it's no no use now. Uh, this is the last I have to fight. That's a Pidgey, though. Don't have to fight this. But I did. Uh, am I going to bother catching a Pidgey? No, probably not. Um, let's run away. Right, let's fight this last that we were going to fight. So down here, we have a Lure. Lures are really useful. Not only do they make rarer Pokemon appear, they make all Pokemon that appear guaranteed to be a much higher level. That's why I haven't been catching anything till now, because if I use this lure, then everything that appears from now on will be better. So for the stuff I want to catch, this is much better. So we want to catch Caterpie first. 
I want to catch both bugs, I want to keep them on me at all times, because it's actually very advantageous, because they level up very quickly, and so there'll be a nice, easy... Um, there'll be a nice, easy... Six species, basically. Caterpie, Metapod, Bead... Ah, uh, Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, Weedle, Cocoon, and Beedrill. Right, let's get that. Ah, oh, trolling little bastard. And hook. There we go, excellent. I'll say the excellent... What I was going to say is the advantage of the excellent captures is that they also get us more experience as well as being more likely to just do a capture anyway. If you're good at this game, speedrunning sense, you should have no Pokemon basic or very few breakout. Unfortunately, I'm not, so... No idea why this is giving me so much shit of all things. Crap. Oh my god. Fucking Caterpie! What is going on?! There we go. At least we got it with an excellent capture as well, so we got a lot of multipliers. I think it gets plus times three to your experience. I'll show it off briefly, yeah. Uh, new Pokemon, excellent throw. Get a lot of ex extra experience, which matters for my Eevee. Um, my Eevee is going to be my predominant fighting partner for the foreseeable future, basically. Now we've got a second Pokemon. I'm going to keep this Caterpie in my party for leveling up, and it's also handy because it lets us summon a friend, um, which means I use a second Joy-Con, uh, and I can do... I can do some combat as double battles, and I can do support trainers here, which means my capturing is much easier because we throw two balls at once and do a super duper synchronized capture. I actually can't really fuck that up because I've got both my Joy-Cons strapped into the same rig, so it will throw both balls at exactly the same time. Didn't get an excellent or a good capture or anything like that, but we have got uh, these two, which is good. My Eevee needs to be level 10 before we're on to Brock, so I want to see how we're doing. If it's not quite there, I'll just catch some stuff uh, outside. Potentially want to capture a Bell Sprout as well, but I'm going to fight this guy first. And you can see also when we have uh, two players engaged, uh, then we also get our Caterpie fighting alongside us. I didn't particularly want that, uh, but I've got to turn it off, so there we go. But yeah, the crucial thing about Eevee having uh, being level 10 is that it will get. Um, it will get. Not string shot, what's it called? Double kick, uh, which we need for fighting Brock. Alright, so our friend disappear because she's not very helpful, and let's head on to route two. We have to do a little bit of extra catching here because I wanted to say try and get it bell sprout, so. Now there is a large a glowing one. If they're glowing red or blue, it means they are either huge or tiny, respectively. Um, and that means you just get a little bit more experience. So Hello, second controller. Oh, bloody second controller's falling asleep. Unhelpful. Right, let's catch with these. Whoop! Crap. Well, there we go. Getting the excellent captures and whatnot is a skill, as I say, which I don't have. But we should at least be able to capture this, and this should be a high enough level that it'll evolve relatively quickly, because we want it as a weeping bell at some points. And also gets a nice bit of experience for my EV. Not quite. You see how these, these level ups are going diddle ding diddle ding does take a long time. Caterpie is evolving as well, this takes time, um, but that's fine. Let's, I think I'll need to catch a Pidgey or something like that just in order to uh, get the experience. Maybe a Metapod or a Cocoon, well, I'm only going to get these, but... Yeah, I kind of want to avoid getting a Pidgey now because I want to get a Pidgey later. Um, the Weedle is obviously evolving as well. This is why these bugs are really handy to have, at least until they're level 10. Which is when they're fully evolved and we chuck them in the bin. We don't chuck them in the bin, but we keep them hanging around. We actually will use one of them against the champion, which is hilarious. Um, but we're not there yet. And then finally, there's the Bellsprout we actually caught. Alright, we'll catch this large Caterpie here, just for the experience, really. Um, so, let's... Hopefully this one won't give me as much shit as the previous Caterpie did. Oh, piss off. There we go, that's a great capture. So that should be enough now to level up my Eevee. There we go, Eevee's level 10, we're all good. Replace, uh, we learned to double click, kick, so we replace Growl with that. And with that, we are ready to head on. So let's go straight to Pewter Gym. Actually, I'm gonna bin this Caterpie. Uh, there is, because the menu takes a while to fire up, like if I go literally like X, Party, uh, Caterpie, Move Pokemon, 
it's there's there's a whole whole process of why there we go there like menuing is slow in this so there's a the whole thing of like sometimes you don't always have want to actually be removing pokemon as soon as you can you want to try and combine as much of your menuing in one as you can anyway here's jeb uh but we're gonna ignore him and we're gonna go straight on to the gym so he needs to be shown a grass or water type pokemon so we show him our bell sprout in order to get access to the gym we have two trainers here we're not gonna fight either of them despite being ten thousand light years away from facing brock we're gonna face him anyway because we should just be able to do this all with our eevee when i say should there ain't much variance to this really um, this is the the notes I'm following have a pretty deterministic uh, event, uh, like series of events in them. So everything should basically work. And you know, as long as you are level ten and have double kick, you basically can't fail this. As long as your EV isn't one of the nasty natures, which mine isn't. Uh, it might not be the fastest, but they are designed to be reliable rather than fast strategies. So let's start by double kicking this Geodude twice, as in four kicks in total, because each one should do half its health. Now I'll send an Onyx. Um, and I believe what you can do is basically two double kicks here again might kill him, uh, but you don't really want to rely on it. So what you can actually do is tail whip to lower its defense, and then now two double kicks is guaranteed to kill it. And it's, yes, not the fastest strategy. There are some definite, definite kind of YOLO strategies you can do around that, uh, but it depends what your EV's stats are, and I'm not good enough to know all that kind of stuff or keep track of it. Hence, reliable and safe over fast. And that's Prog done. Metapods at level 9. Bellsprout's level 10. Yeah, this is why, as you can see, from, just from that timing as well, you don't want stuff to be leveling up if it's not going directly towards a... Um, a what's it called? An evolution. Um, so we are going to... That's why we're going to bin stuff as soon as we can. But with that done, uh, do I want to teach the EV headbot? No, I don't. Um... With that done, we are going to head to the Pokemon Mart and do a little shot. I can walk straight past these guys. They've been deactivated now. Let's head to the Mart before we head towards Mount Moon. Oh, here's Blue as well. The Blue is actually, slash Gary or whatever you want to call him, is actually separate to your rival in this game, which is kind of weird. Five Great Balls, though. We are going to switch half to Great Balls from now on for capturing. Uh, we are going to have my left hand be on Great Balls, but my right hand be on Pokeballs. We'll switch to Double Great a bit later on the route where it is more necessary and when we have more Great Balls. Most trainers you fight will give you balls in this, so it's pretty handy. Um, so I'm going to sell some of my Pokeballs, but not all of them, because uh, I am not great at the old catching. So, let's do some stuff. I'm here to sell. And for Pokeballs, we have to sell basically our maximum minus 10 so that is 37 so we're going to keep hold of 10 balls and then we need to buy a few other things so we buy 11 great balls nine great balls total there we go my notes very much say like oh go up to nine and then down to the thing uh, anyway we want to get x moves are really handy here sometimes it's absolutely worth um binning a turn to crack your um, power up when you need it, because then it means the rest of the fight is a lot more predictable. Again, we like safety here. Uh, antidotes. We need poison is pretty damning in this run, so let's buy five antidotes. All status heals are problematic, so we'd better have burn heal. And then finally, some awakenings, I think. Yes. And crucially, we want to finish this buying with 500 quid left over. This is for a free Pokemon. Well, not free Pokemon. Pokemon costs 500 quid. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Now we want to head over to Route 3. And we're going to, yes, keep an eye on various things. There's not much, realistically, that we are going to catch um, before getting to Mount Moon. So this is mostly going to be me dodging trainers. Oh, no. I don't know what you are. It's a coach trainer. Can I avoid you? Yep, I can avoid you. Cool, that's fine. Uh, let's watch this spinner. Down. Left. Right. Down. There we go. Cool. Um, and this guy, we can probably hop around this way. Basically, I have notes for how to fight most of the trainers. If I don't have notes for them, I'm going to assume that's because I don't need to fight them. Uh, there's a lure in here, which will be useful. We're going to go to Mount Moon, where we do have some important catches to make, so the low lure will be handy. Uh, I'll see you at the Pokemon Center outside Mount Moon. Oh, bug catcher. Can I shoot around him? No, I can't. 
There was clearly a better way of doing that, which I didn't do. So, obviously, more advanced versions of the routing don't involve healing, but that also assumes that everything plays out ultimately, and you don't fight any trains you don't need to, which I have not done so far, so I'm going to heal. It takes about 10 seconds or so, which is not ideal, but I just want to finish this in a time at this point, rather than um, I'm not exactly going for maximum beans. This guy here will sell you a magic up for 500 quid. Uh, way quicker than catching anything, um, so that is just another one for the list. We are not going to be turning this guy into a Gyarados, so I'm going to bin him out of my party immediately. But it is another one for the list. Party box. God, it's a real complex one, isn't it? There we go. Remove from party. Unless there's a faster way of doing that, which I am forgetting or not aware of. But either way, into Mount Moon we go. Oh yes, because this is based on Pokemon Yellow, um, Jesse and James kick around in this as well. But we can largely uh, avoid them. Well, we don't have to really do anything with them. So I'm going to continue until off to the right until we get to Alas, whom I can't avoid. That's this one here. This is Lass Evelyn. I should have taught my Eevee headbutt. So the notes are trying to be very efficient. So... Two tackles will do it in. Cool, that'd be fine. Um, my notes are trying to be very efficient, and so I shouldn't, at Pokes Brock, have done any menuing and partying stuff until just before this lass, and then at this point is exactly when we would do all of our menuing, which would include um, depositing things out of the box, but then also using the HM um, to avoid having to fire this up kind of multiple times. But there it is. A, we want to teach Eevee Headbutt instead of Tackle. Headbutt is going to kind of become our workhorse of the time. I thought that was the case. There we go. Uh, let's forget that. Tackle. And there we go. Now, we want to fire up that lure we just got here as well. I should have done that all during that same section of menuing. So as I say, we have got some captures to attempt to make down here. Oh, that's a Geodude. We want a Geodude. Oh, and a Paris. We want a Paris as well. Let's get a Paris first. We definitely want a Geodude, a Paris, and ideally a Clefairy. Um, all of them make things a little easier. Yep, get through the thing while it's smaller. Cool. Uh, let's add my second trainer. I want to be on... Oh, fucking Christ. God, this... I've got my controllers on the wrong side, and it's really unhelpful. Um, right, so one bag. And I'm going to be on Great Balls, whilst my pal is just going to be on Regular Balls. Yes, I've got them the wrong way around, which is incredibly infuriating. Oh, Christ. I still don't know exactly how the motion sensor works. I swear I did that for there we go. Ooh, double excellent capture. Right, this should get it. I think now we've got two people and great balls. Breakout should be a lot rarer. There we go. Excellent. That's some of our bugs done. Um, that's certainly going to be Metapod evolving into Butterfree now. We'll grab this dear dude that's here as well. That's a great, so that should be pretty good. Should be pretty great, actually. Hey. And that's our Kakuna leveled up as well, so I'm going to do some depositing in just a second. And then we just need to keep our eyes out for a Clefairy, but with the lure on, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Alright, this guy should be full of Sand Slashes if he's the right guy. Not Sand Slashes, Sand Trues. He shouldn't be full of, he should just have one. He should also be called Josh. He's called Robbie. Shit. We fucked up here, guys. I think you were a dodgeable person. We've got a Mankey. Great. Oh, Mankey's Nightshink, that's... Mm, uh, okay, let's see how that's going to be. You're level 8, that's fine. I'm not worried about you actually anymore. Oh, just because I was f it's fighting an abnormal type, so it could have been problematic, but it's not. Eevee's up to level 13, as I say, we want Eevee at level 15 by the time we get out of Mount Moon. That should be fine, because I've done a few fights that I didn't need to. Um, but there we go. So if you're Robbie, where's Josh? Is this Moonstone? No, that's an ether. Ah, parts of the notes have maps, other parts don't, and I've clearly not do good at this. Um, why am I picking up all this stuff? God, there's so many forces of habit, you just gotta really learn that's a Zubat. We don't want to catch a Zubat. Zubats are an extremely annoying capture because of how they flap around. Uh, just not worth my time and effort, so realistically, shouldn't have actually hit it. Um, but there we go. There's another Geodude. Um, that spinning. Wait for it to turn that way. There you go. Oh, my lures are out of crap. 
That's not so good. Are you Josh? You're undodgeable, which implies that you are Josh. That's a strange sentence without context, but there we go. Ah, Josh! We meet at last! Alright, let's kill this man's Sentry with two headbots. Sentry is an extremely cute Pokemon. I still absolutely love the little bastard. I believe that we have Ekans on this version instead of Sentro. Um, which is... Oh, shit! I went to scratch my arm and I accidentally sent out my bloody Butterfree with my support trainer. Oh, that's fine. We're going to kill this man anyway, but this way at least we've... Um, we have... Slowed ourselves down a bit. So that's all that happens if you accidentally send out your support trainer. There we go. Now you can, you can go away, support trainer. Right, now there's a spinning hiker there who we want to, generally speaking, avoid... There we go. Uh, this is a Moonstone? Pearl. No, that's not what I wanted at all. Um, go down the ladder to the right of Yonkshu. Oh, Josh. So we wanted to go down... Oh, this is the little, like, secret room, innit? Yes, then down the next ladder. Oh, a Chansey is sometimes worth it, but it's an annoying catch, apparently. Uh, there's a nugget there. And in here as well, there should be a moonstone, which is handy. I actually am not going to go for the Chansey. Um, I want the Clefairy instead. Chansey's just too annoying of a, of a catch. So what I'm going to do is just repeatedly go up and down here, and which rejigs the spawns. Ah, Christ. Until we get a Clefairy. Clefable. Not worth it. More annoying catch, and still only one point, whereas actually Clefairy will get us too, especially if we evolve it with that team. Ah, to fuck it! Well, there is a Clefairy there, I just missed the way to it. 